Hey guys, what's up? It's Drew here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the new Pinnacle Crucible reward, Luna's Howl. This weapon is obtained by getting the Shock and Denial quest from Shax, and following it to completion to get the reward. There are seven quest steps, and they appear to be based off of the seven stages of grief, in which each quest step actually gives you a nice little flavor lore and text to take a look at. It was a nice added touch to have a story being told along with the quest. The steps for the quest is number one, Shock and Denial. Complete 10 Crucible matches in the competitive playlist. Second is pain and guilt you'll have to defeat opponents with final blows from hand cannons and i think this totaled around 150 hand cannon kills don't quote me on that but i believe it felt like somewhere between 150 to 200 kills step three is anger and bargaining and you'll have to get 200 solar final blows next is depression and loneliness where you'll have to complete three rumble matches step five is the upper turn where you have to defeat opponents with precision final blows from hand cannons so you'll have to get headshot kills and i had to get 100 step six is reconstruction and this this is where you'll have to reach the glory rank fabled, which is 2,100 points. Finally is step 7, which is acceptance, where you return to Lord Shax and obtain the weapon. Now that we've talked about the quest steps, let's talk about the weapon itself. Its archetype is a precision hand cannon, which means it fires at 180 rounds per minute and has 78 impact. It deals 57 damage to the head and 39 damage to the body, resulting in a 1.0 second optimal time to kill with 2 crit 2 body or 3 crit 1 body against higher resilience levels, and then a 1.67 second base time to kill, taking 6 body shots, and again that's against 6 resilience or higher. The more average time to kill of this weapon is 1.33 seconds, taking 1 crit 4 body or just 5 body shots dependent on the resilience level. As far as noticeable perks go, we have Drop Meg, Zen Moment, and Magnificent Howl. Starting with Drop Meg, this allows us to have a very fast reload speed on the weapon, but it wastes remaining ammo in the mag whenever you reload. So whatever bullets you have left in your mag will effectively be wasted every time you reload, as a trade-off for an incredibly fast reload speed. With Zen Moment, dealing damage increases your weapon's stability. On precision hand cannons, you already need very little recoil compensation to repeatedly land headshots, but with Zen Moment, this allows you to hit rapid headshots with ease and no need for recoil compensation and only necessary to focus on really precision shooting. Now here's the really unique perk that you should be interested in, Magnificent Howl. Rapidly landing two precision shots grants a short period of bonus damage until your next kill or miss. Magnificent Howl grants a 2.3 times damage buff for 3 seconds after landing two headshots in rapid succession. This means one second apart without missing or hitting a body shot. With Magnificent Howl active, Luna's Howl deals 131 critical damage and 88 body damage. With a 3 tap, the time to kill is 0.66 seconds. And with a 2 tap, which is possible and I'll get into in a moment, the time to kill is 0.33 seconds. Against a single target, you can kill in 2 crit 1 body, 2 crits to activate the perk, and then a body shot to finish. Against multiple targets or enemies though, you can land 2 headshots to activate the perk, whether that be just normal precision hits on a target without killing them, 2 crits to clean up a weak target, or even 2 body shots and then 2 crits to kill on a full health enemy, then that'll activate the buff and it will always have the ability to one crit one body the next target within that three second period of Magnificent Hell being active. You can also land a single critical hit on a target, whether that just be a hit or a kill, then proceed to two crit a second target However, this only works against two resilience enemies. Above this, it will actually be a one crit two body. If you happen to run out of time for the damage buff, hitting one single crit for 132 will guarantee a one crit two body kill, where the other two body shots will be the regular damage. If you hit a buffed body shot and run out of time, it will guarantee a three body one crit kill, or potentially two body one crit against very, very low resilience. As far as my general thoughts go, I've always enjoyed precision hand cannons. I like that they have a degree of consistency that I don't find a lot in the Destiny sandbox. They have low recoil and pinpoint accuracy to encourage and allow a focus on precision shooting, higher in air accuracy than other weapons for more consistency with vertical play, and seemingly better hip fire accuracy. Don't get me wrong though, these hand cannons are more like trace weapons or tracking weapons rather than the traditional flick weapons that you'd be used to with a more traditional hand cannon archetype. These hand cannons take a lot more precision and fine movements rather than quick snaps and flicks like a traditional hand cannon, so if you aren't used to this, you may need to give yourself some time to adjust to it. Luna's Howl is incredibly powerful because it doesn't require a kill or some sort of taxing process to activate the perk. 
I love Sturm and Drang. It's one of my favorite weapon combos, but many are put off of it because you have to get a sidearm kill to two tap, or even compare it to Rampage and Kill Clip, more often used perks, or even Desperado on the Claymore, or even the Ace of Spades Memento Mori bullets. These all require a kill to activate and take advantage of. Magnificent Howl is a perk that can be activated simply by landing precision hits, and in my opinion and experience, it just naturally rewards a skilled player without much thinking other than just focusing on hitting headshots and that sort of precision shooting. I think that Magnificent Howl allows players to continuously outduel opponents should they land precision hits. As much as it's not reliable to count on always precision hits, and I get that, I think there's a good degree of risk given the potential reward you get from that. With other 110 hand cannons before they became 1 crit 2 body, a lot of people said that why would I play to get 3 precision hits on a weapon that can be flinched and fires slower and has a lot of risk to it for only a 0.10 second benefit. So in this case, the time to kill of 0.66 seconds is very noticeably faster than any other hand cannon and much other weapons in the game, so I think it's very well worth the risk. Not hitting the 3 or 4 shot kill with this weapon can be punishing depending on the resilience level of your opponent. Hitting at least one precision hit is always necessary in my opinion to maintain a decently competitive time to kill with other weapons, so I would focus on making sure that you do that. I found that there was a lot of reward in not just spamming my shots with this weapon. I took the time to carefully place each headshot and a three shot kill was the reward. So in my experience, this was very good to do and I'd recommend focusing on each of your shots and carefully placing them. And I think this is the skill that this weapon's trying to promote. Luna's Howl felt pretty awesome when paired with a bow. You can get a body shot with a bow, then two headshots to clean up the target with Luna's Howl, which preps you and primes your buff for three seconds to two tap potentially the next target. Not to mention that this combo doesn't drop special ammo for enemies and maintains a similar degree of potential lethality to some special weapons. However, of course, this weapon is just as effective with a sniper or a shotgun. And personally, I'm excited to try it out with the Wish Ender or the Chaperone. Moving on to our stats, there's no specific stats in the API just quite yet, so we can't tell what these exactly are, but I measured them in Photoshop. They might be one or two stats off, but this should be a good indicator for now. The weapon has 47 range, 79 stability, 42 handling, 86 reload, and 10 bullets in the magazine. In terms of stability, I don't feel like there's much to say about this other than it has nearly no recoil. The weapon is incredibly stable, and that's a result of its very high stability stat combined with the recoil style of the precision hand cannon archetype, as well as Zen Moment. I believe it's currently the highest stability hand cannon in the game, including its built-in stability masterwork. If it isn't the highest stability hand cannon, it's surely one of the best. I know that many people tend to not like the precision hand cannon recoil pattern from claims of it blocking the target that you're shooting at, but I think this recoil has been fixed since the archetype first made a debut, and Luna's Howl takes it even further with its very high stability stat and zen moment. I very rarely feel like the recoil is blocking the target at all or impeding my accuracy. For our range on the weapon, Luna's Howl starts experiencing damage drop off at 28 meters, which is about average compared to most other hand cannons. Compared to the popular Dire Promise, this has 27 meters optimal range, so they're in about the same league. Interestingly enough though, the Luna's Howl can 3 tap up to 34 meters as a result of the Magnificent Howl buff, whereas something like the Dire Promise can only do so at 28 meters and stops being able to 3 tap afterwards. The damage buff for Luna's Howl gives it more effective range, however at further ranges, landing headshots repeatedly in rapid succession was noticeably more difficult and inconsistent. To increase that consistency of the Luna's Howl and landing those headshots, I used a hand cannon targeting perk on my helmet and a hand cannon unflinching perk on my chest to again maximize that consistency. I also paired Luna's Howl with Lucky Pants on the Hunter to take the advantage of the accuracy buff from its exotic perk, Illegally Modded Holster, so I can land headshots at range quite more consistently and easily. For our handling reload and magazine on the weapon, Handling felt pretty mediocre, it wasn't terrible or noticeable I guess, but it wasn't exactly snappy in any way. Again, using a hand cannon targeting perk increased the handling and made up for any noticeable deficit, making it much snappier and much more responsive in my experience. In terms of magazine size, it's also pretty average. I think at its absolute best, you can get four kills. This would include landing a three tap, then a two tap, then once again another three tap and another two tap. But on a more average basis, you'll probably get two to three kills per mag. Although the mag is small, its lightning fast reload with drop mag makes up for that size and didn't make the small mag very noticeable to me. 
Drop mag is both a blessing and a curse because the reload speed of the weapon is very, very fast and feels amazing, especially compared to a lot of the other 180 RPM hand cannons, which have very low mags and very long reloads. But you do have to watch your reloads because with drop mag, again, reloading repeatedly and early on into the mag will waste more ammo. It'll waste the remaining ammo you have in the mag and it wastes it quicker than you probably expected to. For this reason, using Marksman Dodge was a great way to reload quickly if you had to early on in the mag without wasting any ammo. For our perks, mods, and masterwork, Luna's Howl comes stock built in with a tier 10 stability masterwork, so you won't be able to change that, and might as well just consider it a part of the base stats. Perks are also static or set, so despite it saying that it's a random roll weapon, the perks available on it are fixed as is. With this weapon, I'd recommend putting on an Icarus Grip mod or Targeting Adjuster mod. Either one of these would increase the consistency of the weapon. However, Icarus Grip isn't quite as necessary because the 180 RPM hand cannons already have some pretty great inner accuracy, so personally, I'd use the Targeting Adjuster for more consistent headshots. For using this weapon in PvE or Gambit, as far as damage output goes, this weapon dealt 83 crit damage without the Magnificent Howl buff, and 191 critical damage with the buff active against the Primeval, with a Primeval Slayer times 2 modifier active. With more Primeval Slayer buffs active, you can expect more damage. Magnificent Howl is an excellent perk for damage, especially compared to other primary weapons, as the perk grants 2.3 times damage continuously after its activation. So as long as you don't miss or kill a target, it's going to keep giving you 2.3 times damage for that 3 seconds until you activate it once again. So you can have two shots, three seconds of 2.3 times damage, two shots, 2.3 times damage, and you can continue until you kill the target or of course miss. Luna's Howl is very good for yellow health enemies or blockers since you're able to take them out pretty quickly and efficiently without needing to dump much special or heavy ammo. And for the same reason, this weapon performs pretty great for killing mobs of enemies and crowd control with high lethality and very fast reload speeds. Luna's Howl was great for stopping enemy invaders since you can just activate the perk from hitting adds twice with critical hits, then switch over to the invader and kill them in a two or three tap. Of course, it's still good for invading, but when invading, you don't have ads to shoot for the absolute free headshot perk activation. Anyways, that's all I got to say about the Luna's Howl. Tell me what you think about the weapon in the comments below. I absolutely love the weapon. I think this might be one of my favorite weapons in the game, and it's incredibly satisfying and fun to use. I very much recommend going to the competitive playlist, playing some matches, and working towards this weapon. It's more than attainable. If you guys are interested, I'm giving away a day of seven emblem. If you'd like to enter, all you have to do is comment below with your Battle.net, PSN, or Xbox Live gamer tag, as well as make sure to subscribe to the channel and follow me on Twitch, link is in the description. Thank you again guys so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video, hope you enjoyed the review, as always it's been Drew here, and I'll catch you guys later.